on the same issue. Thank you. Mr. Nunes? Thank you, uh, Mr. Cole. Th this whole uh, issue of state preemption is just a, just a, a false uh, red herring uh, put up by the left uh, because they know what they've done to our region uh, is wrong. They've taken people's private property. Uh, and so they put up the state preemption argument, which is total nonsense. They all know it uh, because the federal government controls most of the water in the state. And it's pr every time you change federal law, the way that the water was taken away from us was by preempting state law. So every time you move water in California, you preempt, by, you preempt state law. So uh, for example, probably the best example, and I would actually go along with all this preemption stuff if, if San Francisco and San Jose and all the Bay Area, if they were willing to give up their water and ship it out to the Delta to protect the fish that they so love, they claim to love, I'd have some respect for them but I don't think a lot of people in this country understand that part of Yosemite was dammed up by this Congress, federal preemption. That's water that should go to my area, and they conveniently pipe that water and use it all over the Bay Area, which is a desert drier than ours. So you want to talk about people who, who live in a glass house? There's another one. I don't see anybody. They want, they want to protect the fish. They want to protect the salt in the Delta. Great. Send your water out there. We'll pump it up from the Delta over there, too. But they'd have to live under the same regulations. So uh, you know what this is about? This is about talking about Tenth Amendment states' rights uh, as a red herring to try to scare Republicans, because they know we have the votes to pass this. And they know the Senate doesn't want to take it up. Why? Because they don't want to be exposed that they get their water from the same place that we do, except they have preempted state law for 100 years. A couple of Quick points. First, I owe you an apology, Mr. Huffman. I, I uh, misreferred to you, and my good friend brought that to my attention. I apologize. Uh, I've been called worse. Uh, and uh, look, I have enormous respect for my, my friend, uh, Mr. Nunes. Well, you're all my friends, but particularly uh, Mr. Nunes and Mr. Garamondi. I know better clearly than I know you, Mr. Huffman, but I look forward to making. Uh, friends with you uh, in the future. Um, and it is unusual, I must say. I've, I've, my experience has been states are usually big transgressors on Indian water rights, not the big defenders. Uh, and it's been more often the federal government has been, uh, as bad as its record is, more likely to, to defend tribal water rights. But anyway, that, uh, that answered my question, my concern. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. And uh, you'll did might, you? might I, through the chair, just offer a quick clarification? Does the gentleman wish to engage? On your name or on no. a, <laughs> Gen Mr. Cole holds time, gentleman. Director. I certainly uh, yield. Uh, there's an important clarification of California water law. The Constitution of the state of California provides that all water in the state belongs to the people of California. It is not private property. That public resource is then allocated and administered through the state, through the State Water Resources Control Board. That entire mechanism for managing a public resource is what would be preempted and taken away, including the public trust doctrine, which not only goes back to the founding of California, but goes back to Justinian law in Roman code. So I, I think those are important clarifications when we talk about the reach and the scope and the disruption caused by the preemptive language in this bill. Gentlemen. Uh, yeah, just to respond, so the water that the federal government preempted, take, took from my area and shipped it over, pipes it over to San Francisco. It's a pure preemption. That so, was a, a permit granted by the state of California to the city of San Francisco. And signed into law by the federal government. Yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Gentlemen, yields back his time. Uh, further questions from any Republican? Gentlemen, Dr. Burgess is recognized. Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Nunez, we've talked about this before. Uh, in fact, I think we passed, or the House passed legislation, or considered legislation in 2009 or 2010 on this. What is the problem for getting this solved? I mean, there have been some high-profile television shows, public town halls down in your district, uh, talking to the people who've been affected. Is it, is it the House? Is it the Senate? What, what is, is it the Endangered Species Act? What is preventing you from solving your problem? Thank you, uh, Mr. Burgess. So basically, obviously, the House of Representatives knows the right thing to do. The Senate has refused to engage. Uh, it took uh, Speaker Boehner coming out to then, who then had to, the, the Senate had to respond to the Speaker of the House. 
Uh, before that, they refused to respond, uh, largely because in order to get elected in the state of California, and I like my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, but you don't make it through a Democratic primary without the endorsement of NRDC, Sierra Club, and all the environmental groups. So the same goes for the statewide candidates. So the governor, the, the senators in our state, they don't want to upset NRDC. They don't want to upset Sierra Club. And I understand why. People have made millions. The lawyers for NRDC have made millions off of this water. They're rich. They've sued. They've taken people's property rights away. I get it. But at the end of the day, my constituents lost their private property rights in this while others got rich and others get water for free. And some of the most...